morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about construction drawings which is part of National 5 Graphic Communications. This part of the unit um, is normally quite short and generally comes up in the exam rather than in the polio aspect of it. But we'll cover everything that we need to know at National 5 level. Our learning intentions for this is, is that we were developing your knowledge and understanding of the building drawings. This is something that you would have completed um, in S23, but it might be a little bit of a refresher. We're also going to look into scale and the purpose of using a scale. By the end of this, you should be able to identify the different range of building drawings that we use um, in quite a number of places and also be able to identify scales that are going to be suitable for each of these drawings. When we talk about a project set, we're talking about the group of drawings that you would use maybe in construction um, to help you with all of the different people that you're going to be working with. So again, the list that we've got below isn't extensive. There is a number of people who would also be using these. Um, so we've got people like builders, plumbers, electricians, joiners. And to be honest, each of these different people will use different parts of different drawings. So it's important to know the different types of drawings that we use for our project set and then also maybe just having a, a little bit of knowledge to say who would be using these types of drawings. Um, if we are talking about a new build estate or a building that's going to be built in a certain area, this these sets of drawings have to be submitted to whoever your local authority is um, to make sure that they're suitable, they meet with health and safety, they comply with different regulations, um, and there's not going to be anything opposed to it. There's a lot of things that can be set back um, with building drawings, but normally, if it's a new build development, they are pretty straightforward. The first one we're going to look at is your location plan. Now, normally, we would use a scale of 1 to 1,250, um, in some cases, we can go a little bit um, different and go for 1 to 2,500. Okay, so remember, the size of the scale is determined by maybe the size of the page that you've got or potentially the size of the area that you're trying to show. So when we're talking about a location plan, we want to know what is going to be surrounding the building that we're talking about. So in a new build estate, you might be buying a certain plot and you want to see who's going to be living next to you in terms of the size of the house, the size of the garden, where any main roads are going to be, where any paths are going to be, is there going to be someone that's um, joined on to you at the back, so your gardens are back to back, etc. And all of this information can be picked up on the location plan. Now... When we've got the location plan, if it is a new build, it sometimes is talking about the plot number rather than the actual house number that links to the street. But we should have some form of um, street name or road name, something like that, linked in with your location plan. The location plan that we've got on the right hand side here is very basic. You can see that there's a difference in the houses that are being built. You can see the shape of the rectangles kind of overlapping each other. You can see the shapes of the gardens, you can see the bend in the road. Um, and then also we've got a kind of thinner line, double line next to the road, which is identified as your pavement or your kind of footpath, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then up the top left of this location plan, we've got a north symbol. So that's a symbol that you need to learn and it was obviously pointing in the direction of north. Um, on the drawing, it's also got information in terms of which drawing it is part of, the scale that it's linked to, the location of it, anything like this. So just information that you would generally need to know about the location of the building in question. This is just a kind of zoomed in version of the location plan for you to have a better look at it. Then we've got site plans. So site plans are obviously going to be a little bit more detail and for a range of different people. So what we've got here are more exact sizes in terms of area that you've got or dimensions. So it might be the distance from the road to the very edge of the back garden. It might be the width of the driveway. It could be literally anything, any sort of size information that we need. Um, 
we try and use different colours just to make it a little bit clearer, but again, it doesn't always happen. Um, we've got information for different tradespeople that would look into the drainage. So if you've got certain um, pipes or drains or manholes or whatever um, located either in your garden, in your front garden, it might be under your driveway, anything like that, just so that you knew that someone could eventually come around and say that they need a little bit of access to it and that it's in your property. So what you'll notice on this um, site plan is that there are a number of different kind of symbols included. So these symbols just now are included at the end of this presentation, but just now they are talking about existing trees, trees that are going to be removed, um, and positions of new trees if they're going to add any in, depending on where the building has been built, if it's a new build, um, or if there's something already there in place. Again, notice on this site plan that you have got the north symbol that's already included. Now, one of the more complex drawings that you'll probably see is a floor plan. Now, floor plans can be made up in a number of different layers simply because within each floor plan, we might need to have different tradespeople being able to access them and look at their specific information. So generally what happens is the digital version would have all of your different layers in a separate colour. So for example, a plumber can see all the plumbing works. All of that would be in, for example, blue. We then might have um, a red layer, which is going to be the electrician. So we can see where the sockets are going to go, where the wiring is going to be, um, anything like that. And we might also want to have things like windows, doors, all of that type of thing in different layers, just to make it a little bit clearer. So when we've got all these layers on, it does make it really confusing, but at some point it might be necessary to have every single layer on to make sure that doors are going to open and they're not going to hit off anything, or the light switch is going to be in an appropriate place for the, the location of the door, etc. So again, it's useful to have digital versions of the floor plans so that you can turn layers on and off um, for each of the different tradespeople. Normally, when we're talking about a floor plan, we're looking at a scale of 1 to 50. Now, we obviously want to have a very accurate scale drawn of a floor plan so that if you are planning to move into somewhere, you can say, right, I know the size that my, that my bed's going to fit in that exact position for my bedroom, or I could get a bigger bed, a smaller bed, anything like that. Um, within our floor plans, we want to know about the dimensions to be... Um, the main thing we've then got information like plumbing so where toilets are going to be is there going to be any outside taps where's the taps going to be in the kitchen um where is everything going to be located in the bathroom for your electrical one we want to know where not only light switches are but plug sockets plug sockets are an important one and um, if you're trying to imagine what the layout of your house is going to look like we've then got things like your foundations and your block work so for your walls um other types of information that we can include are your doors, your windows, um, if there is a fixed position for um, anything that would be in your bathroom, so like a sink, a shower, um, a toilet, anything like that. Um, and another thing that's also quite good is to include kind of storage areas, so having that identified on your floor plan. So when you look at this, this is a very, very busy floor plan but you can see that there's a range of different things going on. And if we were to have this all in colours and turn the layers on and off, it would be a little bit more simplistic for you to see. Okay, a more simpler version of a floor plan is shown in this graphic. Um, now what we can see is that we've got um, double doors on the kind of right-hand side, which is your two quarter circles with your line. Um, we've also got a fire exit on the left hand side which is shown as double doors again. Notice that you can see which way the doors are opening. So on the left hand side they're opening out the way, on the right hand side they're opening in the way. So you can see the direction that the door would move in terms of the little um, part of the circle. We've got your major dimensions there. You've got the kind of little angle on the outside for the shape because obviously it's not a kind of square or rectangular shape that you've got but it has got details of these different bits and pieces um there you'll notice again that 
on the right hand side you've got all of these pieces of information that you had in the previous drawing so you had um, your drawing set number you had the title of the drawing the scale of the drawing whereabouts it is the date things that you would normally have on um, any of your kind of working drawings that you've created on CAD it's a similar version what we can also have as a sectional view so you might want to see what is involved in terms of if we were to cut down the 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 length the height of the building sorry um so we can see where your doors and windows are going to be where the different ground levels are because not always not always is the um the floor directly at the very bottom of the drawing so you might have floor space underneath that you can or can't access you might have a couple of steps up from the building um from the pavement level so it's just to, for you to see what's kind of underneath there Again, everything on the little drawn to the right hand side is identified for you. But knowing that we've got our sectional views to a scale of 1 to 20, so it's a little bit more detailed um, and a little bit bigger for you to see. But again, this is part of your project set. Okay, so again, this is just a second um, image of a sectional view. You can kind of see a little bit more clearly. Um, things that you would need to know about in terms of your building standards as identified on this drawing so things like your insulation you've got windows you've got floorboards you've got concrete you've got brickwork all of these different pieces of information is things that you should be looking to remember as part of your knowledge you could be asked to identify these different parts in an sqa exam pass paper then we've got our elevation. So basically, we just want to look at the building on two D on a two D level. So looking at from the front, and then looking at it from the ends. Um, for this one, it might just be to show you what the building is actually going to look like. Again, if it's a new build, um, house or flat or just even a supermarket, you might want to know what it's going to look like. Has it got multiple floors? Has it got windows all aligned with each other? Has it got a garage? Um, has it a garage door? What does a garage door look like? What do the steps look like? Or um, anything like that. It can also show you the type of window that are being, that's been planned to put in to the building. So is it a window that is half down the middle and you can open the window from, from the centre out? Is it that the window is hinged at the top, so it's just a little bit that opens at the top of it? Um, has it got two small windows at the sides and one large one in the middle? All of these different things are there and it's it's generally a rendered graphic that you can see to make it look a little bit more um, realistic in terms of materials. A um, couple other things you might notice in it is the style of roof. So has it got one point in the centre? Um, is the centre actually on the end elevation rather on the elevation? All these different things you wouldn't see from your location plan, your site plan, your floor plan, anything like that. So this just gives a more um, in-depth detail of the outside of the building. Again, this is just a kind of detailed view of the elevation from the previous page. BS double eight double eight symbols are something that you need to know for your um national five and higher. At higher level, we'll learn a couple more symbols. At national five, these are the only ones that we need to know about. So it's important that you learn absolutely every single one of these. Um, some of them will be a little bit more straightforward than others. Some of them link into other subjects that you might study across the school. So for example, your contour lines and the landscaping. That's exactly the same as what you would see um, if you were studying geography. You've also got your lamp. This is something that you would notice um, if you were studying physics, engineering, science, something like that. Okay, So some of them are um, transferable between subjects. Some of them are completely new. Some of them kind of look like what you, what you would imagine them to be. For example, a shower tray, a square with a circle, your plug hole. Pretty straightforward, your sink top, pretty straightforward. But some of the other ones in terms of like concrete, brickwork, sawn timber, these ones are slightly different. 
so it's worthwhile taking time to learn each of these different symbols. And that is the end of our project sets and your construction drawings. Now what I'll do is I will upload the standards and convention docu document which is linked to the SQA and it has absolutely everything that you need to know in terms of these standards and conventions. It's worthwhile reading through it and in class we'll identify the parts that you really need to know for National 5 level and then we'll talk about anything that you needed to know at higher level. <laughs>